Today I've got another coffee maker review and this one is specifically a pour over coffee maker. This is the Kalita Wave and it's the 185 version. So this is for technically up to three to four cups, but you can see that it's pretty small. I mean, I can't really give you any scale here unless I showed you a comparison with the hard B60. So why don't I do that? I'll just give you a little side-by-side -side look here. So Hario V60 is noticeably a little bit taller uh, in terms of width they're about the same and then if we were going to compare it to a three-hole dripper like this HIC here you can see that's much much bigger and it's heavier it's made of ceramic or porcelain I think this one is uh, this is all stainless steel. So like the Hario, it's also made in Japan. And really the differences that you're going to see here are that this has a somewhat flat bottom base. It's still conical because, I mean, it's obvious it's still conical, but it still has a flatter base than, say, the V60, which also has a noticeably bigger hole. This has three tiny holes at the bottom. So that's one of the major differences. The theory is that with three holes and a flat base, you're going to have a more even extraction and the coffee will also saturate for a period that is sufficient versus the V60. People like James Freeman at Blue Bottle will say that it's a little bit too quick because of the larger hole. And then if you just compared it to this HIC here, you can see we've got a completely conical base. I mean, there's not much room there. It goes right through and the holes are one, two, three across horizontally, whereas these are kind of in this triangular shape. So I'm going to run through a brew, 15 grams of coffee. I'll show you how fine slash how coarse the coffee is that I use. We'll be brewing with Ritual's uh, Producer's Pride today. And I'm going to do a 15 to 1 ratio. So 225 grams of water and I'm going to brew at 205 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'll be right back. So Kalita uses its, its own special filters, like every coffee maker seemingly, and they're quite expensive. I think this box, I'm not sure exactly how many came with it, I'll follow up in the uh, notes at the bottom, but um, I know they aren't cheap. And you can see it kind of looks like a Melita filter which is right here and really the difference is that it's smaller made to fit right in there you could technically squeeze this in here but it wouldn't settle down in there very nicely it's got a much larger base the paper is noticeably thicker than Melita too, so Melita, Melita, still don't know to this day. Anyway, special filters, I'm just gonna rinse it out and then I'll actually add the coffee and then start brewing. And these ridges here, I guess the purpose of them, um, you see the ridges on the side, is to keep the filter from sticking against the side. Okay, ground coffee in the basket. It is that coarse, if you can see. So this coffee maker, the Kalita, will not take up too much room in your kitchen, which is nice. And being stainless steel, 
you know that it's gonna hold heat pretty nicely. So the brew temp temperature shouldn't drop too much as you're going through the process, unlike it would with say a Hario V60, like the one I have, which is made of glass. So the brew is just finally wrapping up. All the water is finally passing through. I have it clocked in at just beyond four minutes, and that's excluding the bloom. So you'll want to make sure that you're not going too fine with the grind. I had my grinder set to a pretty coarse setting um, in the percolator range on my uh, Breville Smart Grinder Pro, but it clearly wasn't enough. So I'm going to give the coffee a taste once this finally finishes up here, but you want to be targeting between, I'd say, two and three minutes for your brew. And in order to do that, you're going to have to go a little bit coarser with your grind. Okay, so wrapping things up here, I'm just going to talk about pros and cons. Even though the brew process is a little bit too long for just a standard drip grind, the coffee did come out quite nicely and um, has lots of nice acidity to it, a um, little bitterness. I thought I was going to get over extracted, but really uh, not too many complaints here. A little bit on the astringent side, so I'm going to experiment with grind a little bit more. But I would start on the lower end, the coarser end for your grind, um, because if you don't do that, you're going to end up with a brew that takes a little bit too long and could risk becoming overextracted and a little bit too bitter. So pros, very lightweight. I like the material being stainless steel, conducts heat well, and is going to make sure your brew temperature stays as accurate as possible throughout the whole pour over where water does tend to cool more quickly over time. Um, I like that it's small, doesn't take up too much space. It's really good looking. I do like the three hole bottom, the flat bottom. I like that it's kind of hybrid between conical and flat base. So who knows, maybe it creates the best of both worlds in that sense. Downside is that the brew process is a little bit longer than, say, the Hario V60 or the um, HIC, HIC that I showed that I showed you. Um, and the filters, these specialized filters, are a little bit expensive, and considering you have to order them online, it's not necessarily the most convenient thing. But you could potentially use another filter here. In fact, I plan to do so and see what the results are with just those Melinda filters. I think that if you pre-soaked one of these filters, that it would sit in inside there nicely. So I would say that this is a great option for pour over if you're looking to get the most out of your coffee. If you're looking for something that's a little bit speedier, then I'd probably go with the Hario. And I do plan to give them a head-to-head -head comparison, so stay tuned for that uh, in one of my future videos, which I will link to in this video once it's up. So good luck. And once again, that is the Kalita 185.